I have Monica's two-year-old son that I'm taking care of. He's a lovely child, but he is two years old. He takes a lot of time and effort all day long. I know Monica's relationship with her son is strained because she's not able to care for him. She's not able to change his diaper or to pick him up and put him to bed or pick him up off the floor. When she's really sick, she's just weak, very weak. But she's a very good mother. When she's feeling better, she gives him all the time she can. She loves him very much. It's not her mothering that is bad, it's her physicality that prevents her from being the person she wants to be for her son. I worry that he needs a younger person to be raising him because he's getting more and more active and he can outrun me in a whip stitch. And I want her to get well so she can do this and that's what she wants too. I want to be with my son and I want to be normal. I'm not a bad mom. I'm just sick. I love him to death. So I'd do anything for him. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm fighting. Or else I would have given up ages ago. I also worry that if she dies as he gets older and looks at photos and sees how sickly his mom was, that he's going to look around and say, why didn't anyone help her? At this point, you're doing pretty much everything for the child. Diapers, feeding. She helps when she can, when she's feeling good. Yeah. She's very close with him. Yeah. yeah. But this has got to be wearing you out. I'm a little tired. I'm not a young woman. <laughs> yeah, but you're caregiving yeah. and mothering a two-year-old. Um, this has got to be, this wasn't in your grand plan. It was not in my retirement portfolio, yeah. correct. OK. Look, here's the deal. Both of you have said that on the course you're on right now, you think that, that this could wind up taking your life, that you could wind up dying here, and that you've been close to it before, 15 days without eating. And you know this can put you into heart failure. Uh, it can put you into kidney failure. You can get to that point. And you, you're using a lot of absolutes saying, I can't eat anything. Um, and I can if I have a fecal transplant, yeah, well, but I can't find anybody to do it for me. That's okay. all that I need. But the reality is you can't get that right now, right? Right now, yeah. Okay, so if that's the reality, then what do you do next? What do you do if you can't get that? I was hoping you could help me get, me get one. Yeah. Well, here's what I think needs to happen, and that is that you have to do everything that you can do to maximize your situation with the things that you do control. For example, I can tell you as a caregiver that the worst thing you can do for a patient is not require them to do everything that they can do. 100% of what they can do if you're dealing with someone that has a major spinal injury and they can barely walk and it takes them 10 minutes to get across from here to the end of this dark brown floor to flip a light switch that you could do in six seconds, you have to allow them to take 10 minutes to get over and flip that light switch you have to require them to do 100% of what they can do. Because if they don't take 10 minutes to get over and flip that light switch, they'll never get there in nine, eight, seven, six, five, three, and seven seconds just like you. If you don't require them to become an active member of the treatment team, then they'll never become an active member of their treatment team. And you're being in my view, way too passive. And, you know, why would you get out of bed? Why would she do anything if somebody's doing everything for her? Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.